Hey, welcome. I've introduced a physics unit on energy, and we're going to continue to begin this energy unit in physics. And because we've talked about work, I've done a screencast on that. I'll put a link in the upper right right now. Because I've done a lesson on work, this will now make more sense. If I say that energy is the ability to do work, that means energy is the ability to apply a force over a displacement. Or to put it in another way that I think is conceptually easier for students to understand, you could say that energy is the ability to cause change. So anything that has the ability to cause change has energy of one form or another. So energy does take different forms, and it's measured in joules. One last thing I want to say at the outset, energy is a scalar value. This is important. So there is no direction to energy, and it can change forms from one type into another. So we're going to be getting into that in a little while. But I do want to talk about a specific type of energy today. And that's going to be stored energy based on position. So this is called gravitational potential energy. So let me ask you a question. If a silly physics teacher took a brick and for a demonstration in class was going to drop the brick on his or her foot, when that brick is dropped, would it have the ability to cause change on that teacher's foot? Of course it would. And so that means that brick has a certain amount of energy stored in it. Would it have more energy if it was raised higher? Yeah, it would, because it would have more ability to cause change on that teacher's foot, you could say. Would it have more energy if it were, say, five bricks taped together as opposed to one brick? Sure it would. So there's another factor in gravitational potential energy, and that's the amount of mass that we're talking about for the object. So we've talked about the height of the object, we've talked about the mass of the object, and there's one more issue that we need to talk about. So height and mass. And lastly, I want you to think, if you could do the same demonstration on the moon, would it make a difference? Would you have more or less energy stored in a brick if it were dropped from the same height, same mass, same height, if that brick were dropped on the moon on an astronaut's foot, would it have more or less or the same amount of ability to cause change on the astronaut's foot? And the answer is it would have less, right? Because the gravitational pull of the moon is less. It's about one-sixth that of the Earth. All right, so now we've reasoned through. There are three things that go into this equation for gravitational potential energy, and that's exactly what we're going to write. So gravitational potential energy is equal to the mass of the object times gravitational acceleration of the Earth times the height through which it's dropped. Now, there are a couple different versions of this equation. I think this is the easiest to reason through and to understand. Let me show you the different versions, though. So... We also can use U sub G here to represent potential energy, and the sub G stands for gravitational. So that U stands for potential energy. Potential means stored energy, energy that's stored based on a position of something, like the position of the brick, for instance. Now, the College Board on AP uses a slightly different version of the equation, and this is one case where I'm not so much of a fan of the AP's version of the equation here. Yes, you can work with it. Yes, you can solve problems with it. I just think it's a little bit clunkier to work with, honestly. Most people use either this version of the equation or this version of the equation. And you can do that as an AP student as well, just as long as you know what you're doing. All right, and so let's do a quick example problem with some numbers here. So we're going to say the brick has a mass of 4 kilograms. It's dropped from a height of 1.11 meters. What is the amount of gravitational potential energy that the brick has at the moment of release? So what we're going to do is just use this equation, plug in our numbers, and solve. We end up with 43.6 joules. And it's really that easy. As an introduction to energy, it's an easy concept to work with. And we're going to build on this as we go throughout our energy unit. So hopefully this has been helpful. Please stick around for more lessons. If you have any comments, please let me know down below. And I hope you have a great day. Take care.